we have <clears throat> we have recently spent some time considering area between a curve and an axis and now we're going to build on that idea to address this idea an idea of volume so let's start with just a really simple picture we'll take this curve and call this simple curve f of x and we'll just be looking at it on a closed interval we'll say from a to b now in previous work we considered the integral of this curve we know that if we integrated that curve from a to b what we would have is the area between the curve and the axis but now we're going to consider volume and the idea of volume, let's start with this picture. We've all seen a can or a cylinder. And some things to notice about a cylinder is that a cylinder has a central point that passes right through the middle of this. And a cylinder is just, in a lot of ways, a stack of circles. Maybe the best picture I can think of for this kind of thing is just a stack of CDs on its side, right? That's what a cylinder is, is just a stack of circles next to each other. And that as this width of each circle shrinks, what you have are th ever thinner and thinner slices. So that they're ultimately circles rather than... Um, disc with some amount of width to them. And hopefully it makes sense that as the width goes to zero, then what we have is an infinite number of circles in this stack. But if we could find the area of all of these circles and add them up, then we'd know the volume of our object. And so that's really the idea with any curve or really any three-dimensional object, is so we're going to attempt to picture it as a stack of circles. So imagine, if we go back to our original picture, that we were taking this curve f of x, and we were going to rotate it around the x-axis. Right? And by rotating it around the x-axis, we're necessarily creating circles. And so I'll try and do my best to come up with what the picture So here's f of x, and here's the x-axis. And if I were to rotate, my point, oops, some technical difficulties. If I were to rotate my point that is at A around the entire axis, then I'll necessarily have a circle. And the radius of this circle is going to be the distance from the center up to f of x, right? The radius of this circle is necessarily f of x. And if I pick another point somewhere in the middle between a and b, I'll just happen to call this c. And if I were to rotate that portion of the curve, I'm also going to have another circle that has a radius and the expression for the radius of that circle is also is again and also f of x. And I could go all the way down to the end point of my curve at b the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to have another circle, and the radius of my circle is necessarily f of x. So again, the, the idea is that if I could find the area of each of these circles, and each of these circles have a radius that's being expressed as f of x in this case, if I could add the areas of all the circles up, then I would know the volume of this entire object. And because all of that's true then, really I'm just integrating from my starting point to my end point an area of a circle formula. Because if I integrate this, if I integrate an area, I, sh I will get a volume. All right, so this is the principle. But in our case, since we're revolving around the x-axis, the radius is always our function squared. Because, well, is always our function. So we're going to integrate from a to b pi times our radius, which is our function 
squared dx. Right? That's the principle involved with this. Now, there's another idea embedded in this. So this is, is a name, is called the disk method. We're just thinking about some three-dimensional object as slices of disks or circles. Now, the other situation is you could have a curve. I'll just draw the picture without the axis that looks something like this. But then that curve has something else below it. Another curve. And so what's happening is this area is being revolved around some axis of rotation. At first it's typically the x-axis, but we'll move it around, but the idea is still the same. And so notice that if I were to spin this around, I'm going to have an object. If I take my outer curve, I'm going to have an object that looks something like this. But then this object is going to have a hole in it. And that hole in it is due to the lower curve, right? There's in effect some type of rod, circular rod that's taken out of it. And so this is called the washer method just because there happens to be a hole in the circle just like a washer but the idea is still the same we're going to integrate from our starting point to our ending point and there are two circles right so there's the circle before everything is taken out so I'll call my outer curve here I'll call it f of x for my purposes and so that creates a huge thing and then there's this inner circle that's formed that's being pulled out. I'll call it g of x in this case. And so I'm going to have to subtract that circle squared. And notice I've got the pi out front because originally this would have been pi times f of x squared minus pi times g of x squared. Right? We're just subtracting the smaller circles from the larger circles to get that whole and so that's the idea that we're going after with this washer method. Let me generalize this a little bit. Let's do one problem as an example. And we'll do quite a few of them. This ends up being a pretty important concept. So let me set up the problem. So in this first problem, I've got a figure that's formed by taking the line y equals 2x. I'll do that in black. I'll do them all in black. y equals 0 which is the x-axis, and x equals 3. Eventually these are going to meet up, and I'll have a triangle. Let me just fix this so it actually looks real. So there's x equals 3, there's y equals 2x, and this area here is being rotated around the x-axis. So I've got my picture, and if you need a little help in seeing this, um, when we're done, we're going to have an object that looks something like this. And so we want to find its volume. And hopefully you can see in my picture that this is just made up of lots of circles, and the radius of the circles happen to be shrinking. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to see where my object starts. So it's starting at x equals 0, and it's stopping at x equals 3. So since I'm rotating around the x-axis, this means that my circles are arranged horizontally. And since my circles are arranged horizontally, how I'm thinking about the object at any rate, then everything will need to be in terms of x. Right? If my object was maybe standing vertically and I was thinking about it that way and I was looking at it in those terms then I would need to think about it in different ways so 
Since I'm thinking about this as circles arranged horizontally, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3. And it's always the area of a circle that I'm integrating because all my shapes are circles. And so it would be pi times the radius squared. Or the radius, I'll sketch it in red, is the distance from my axis of rotation, which is the x-axis, to the top. And in this case, that will always be 2x everywhere along this curve. So my radius is 2x. And since the formula for area of a circle is pi r squared, what I'm going to integrate is pi times 2x squared dx. And I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3. 4 pi x squared dx. And we've done quite a bit of integrating. So we know that when we integrate this, we'll get 4 pi thirds x cubed from 0 to 3. And when we evaluate this, we end up with, what's that, 36 pi minus 0 for a grand total of 36 pi units cubed because it's a volume, so they have to be cubic units, whatever they happen to be. So that's part A. Now part B changes this just a little bit. In part B, our axis of rotation has changed. It's now the line y equals 6. So my picture is a little bit different. Instead of rotating everything down here, I'm rotating everything up here along this horizontal line. So that changes things. It's still 2x, and it's still going to 3, so my basic shape is the same. But instead, I'm going in this direction when I rotate it, so that when I'm done, I'm not even sure I can draw what this might look like. It's going to look maybe something like this. And be rounded in some way, shape, or form. Right, so now we need to think about this differently. We'll need to think about what's our radius. Right, so we're still seeing horizontal circles since we're going around a horizontal line. So we're still going to integrate from 0 to 3. But the issue is how do we express our radius in this case? So let's just sketch it in a little bit. The radius is from our curve. So here, and this is in red, is the space that's getting taken out. And our big radius, I'll do in blue, is going from y equals 6 all the way to the x-axis, right? Because that would be the outer curve and the inner curve. So we've got two things. Our big radius in this case is 6. This is big R. Right, because that's the distance, the outside distance of our shape from way out here all the way to 6. That has to be 6 units. Now the inner radius, or little r, is a little trick here. I'll do little r in red. What we want is this distance right here. Well, the whole thing from the axis to the bottom is 6. But what's being taken out is this part here, and this part is 2x. So the whole thing from top to bottom is 6. The part that's missing is 2x, which means our radius of little r, I'll write it in red, must be 6 minus 2x. That's what that part must be, because the whole thing in blue is 6. The part we're subtracting out is 2x. So 6 minus 2x is our radius. And we'll integrate this as dx. So now we're ready to integrate. And if we clean this problem up a little bit, we'll be integrating from 
I'm going to pull the pi out. So this will be the integral from 0 to 3 of 36 minus 36 minus 24x plus 4x squared dx. I'll write it below it. This is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of 24x minus 4x squared. And when we integrate this, we'll end up with 12x squared minus 4 thirds x cubed from 0 to 3. Substituting in 3, we'll end up with 108 minus 36. And then substituting in 0, we'll have minus 0. And altogether then, that leaves us with 72 units cubed. Right. So if you have to watch this multiple times and make sense of it, please do. So big R is always the big radius, and if there's a chunk missing, then that would be little r. Right. And in the next part of this, let's continue to look at a variety of examples, starting with the same information, but looking at y equals 8.